Christian Medical and Dental Association of Nigeria Students Arm presents the maiden edition of online conferences, Prayer and Missions Conference 2020, with the theme, Arrows in His Quiver. Three platforms, 16 speakers, delegates from all across Nigeria and overseas. It was a life-changing experience for many. Brace up as you listen to power-packed messages and parallel sessions on issues pertaining the Christian medic. God bless you as you listen. I found out some things which is quite interesting. And one of them is that, that the world discipleship never appeared anywhere in the Bible. Discipleship as a term never appeared anywhere in the Bible. Then why is it important? Why are we talking about it? Okay? And if I go further, the word disciple appeared only in the Gospels, that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as well as Acts of the Apostles. Immediately after Acts of the Apostles, there was no word of disciple in the rest of the New Testament. That's the first thing then why are we talking about it? Okay? Now, just the same way um, um, Felicia just helped us to give a basic description of who a disciple is, that a disciple is learning from an, one person, um, there is a learning process from one person to another. Okay? There are two parts to it. There are two phases of discipleship. One can be that I've learned something and in my own understanding, I'm teaching another person what I've learned, okay? So the person is learning from me. Remember, the emphasis is that there is a learning. So when you say there is somebody learning from one another, okay, you can still say that there is a discipleship process going on. The other one is that 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 we are helping or one is helping another person learn from the source and which is the most important for us and that is where our focus this evening will be that we learn from God we learn from Jesus when a disciple in fact there are levels there are different um, discipleship that have been occurring Different churches have discipleship program that they run. But what makes the difference, or why, where the difference occurs, is when there are doctrinal issues or personal learning inbuilt into the process of discipleship. That corrupts the process. But when our learning or your discipleship is that which focuses um, try to focus somebody to focus on Jesus or try to direct one to focus on Jesus. That is the biblical discipleship we are going to focus on this evening. So there is a learning from one from, from me that you can teach another person based on my understanding and belief. Then there is a learning that helps others to learn from the master. Okay? It's just like um, we, we came to school together, a teacher is, is talking, I listened, I decided to teach another person. In the same way, yes, if I try to guide a person and now tell the person this, 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 now focus on the teacher, we will all learn at the same time and we will all grow at the same time. In fact, as a matter of fact, it shortens the work for me as a disciple or for the person helping or the person teaching. Okay, so there is the, our focus this evening is on helping others, okay, which from the Greek word in New Testament English is describing making disciples, to make disciples from the word matute, okay, make disciples. As I was preparing, I decided to find out what are the um, English dictionary description of disciple. I was surprised, really surprised, to realize that 
Discipleship is almost synonymous to the ministry of Jesus. English dictionary, English dictionary described it. In fact, at the point, he said they are followers of Jesus. At the point, he described them as um, he was describing the twelve disciples. He was describing everybody that has, at a point in time in their life, believed in the ministry of Jesus. Okay, so discipleship seems to be quite close. To Christianity. And just like uh, um, Felicia mentioned earlier, a disciple we can describe is a pupil, he can be a student, he can be an apprentice, he can be one. Once there is a learning process from a higher person to a lower person, let's not confuse it, okay? But let's take this at this point because our teachers, our lecturers, there is a learning process. But you will find out the difference between discipleship and the normal teaching, or even the normal mentorship. Okay, so interestingly, he went further in the dictionary to say something, that one who then teaches others. <laughs> that is where the difference matters a lot. That is where the difference matters a lot. One, who then teaches others? So, in our normal lecture or in our normal mentorship, we see that there is a discipler or there is a lecturer, there is a student, or there is a teacher and there is a pupil, or there is a master and there is an apprentice. Okay? But that ends in the apprentice gaining and now putting into practice. Okay? But in discipleship, it's expected that when a master passes, a disciple passes to the um, disciple, it's expected that the disciple, by that process, becomes a disciple it's himself. <laughs> so you realize that it's a cycle that will continuously be. It's a learning process that does not end. It's a long-term process. In fact, as a matter of fact, it's a lifetime process. What it means is that, so far as, I will still explain more, so far as you're a Christian, it's expected that you be two, both the discipler and also the disciple. Interesting. Okay? So it is funny that you're expected to be both the teacher and the student at the same time. It's funny. But that is the cycle that Jesus has given. That is the mandate that Jesus has given. Now, the first question I will ask is, are we disciples of Jesus? Okay? Have we been learning from Jesus? I may I make that assumption. It's easy to say, yes. Yes, we are. We are. And probably on the chat, we will respond, yes. Okay? But the bigger question, which is important to the kingdom mandate is, are we discipling others? That is the big question. Are we discipling others? Because that is the essence and the basic, basic um, mandate and foundational truth that will be asked or mandate will be asked to, to do. Oh. So the, there is a, a very big um, question we, um, passage we usually read. That is Matthew. Matthew. Uh, Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20. Okay? Matthew 28, 18, and 19, 18, 19 and 20. Verse 19 says, Therefore, go. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Okay? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of age. Okay? 
So I underline three words, therefore go. Okay? Then I underline baptizing. Then I underline teach. Okay? Now, literally speaking, by that word, the disciple is surrounded by three participles in English term, meaning that there are things that you do and you will continuously do is occurring without end. Okay? So the first part we describe, I mentioned, we underline is go. Go is a command. In fact, at a point, I, I wanted to find out if there is any way that you can say go, and go will not uh, mean a command. Um, please go. Or, um, uh, uh, however you want to make it polite, go will always be command, will always be an action word, will always mean for you to move, will always mean that there has to be an action to be done. Okay, so when he said go, therefore go, is a command. And that is non-negotiable for the disciple because it is always linked. In fact, when you say there is a disciple, there is a going, there is a doing, there is an action to it. Okay? Then there is teaching, which is the participle of means. Okay? How? How do we do it? How do we do it? Okay? There is the symbol, which is the initiation. And when he talked about how do we do it, he said, then teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Okay? Then that of baptizing shows a symbol of initiation into the fold. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I guess most of us, when we go visit a new church or we start, or when we became born again, most churches have a, disciple, a discipleship class, or they call it um, first-timers class, which will actually try to put you through the foundational knowledge of Christianity, which is beautiful, okay, and which is correct. Though um, some have made it as if it's a system where you sign up and you graduate, and therefore once you graduate, you have a certificate. No. Okay? That's where some people get it wrong. Or some will make it a system where it is a project in which one enters and he finishes the project and is gone. As I described earlier, is something that is continuous. So discipleship class or the discipleship process or being a disciple does not end just by being in a class. It is a continuous process. Okay? So you see where there is a new convert and there is, ah, these people are new converts, therefore they are disciples. And then you see the disciple, disciple makers different from the disciples. Forgetting that the disciple makers are also disciples themselves because learning is continuous. The action is continuous until the very end. That is what Jesus said. I'll look, very, I will be unto you to the very end. <laughs> it's a lifetime process. It doesn't end in just a classroom. Okay? So, now, I made mention, I said something. After Acts of the Apostles, there ceases to be a mention of disciple. From afterwards, what you hear is talking about the Christians, those in Antioch. Of course, we are the first people that are called Christians. We are in the Antioch. Okay, The disciples were first called um, Christians at Antioch according to Acts of the Apostles um, 12, verse 20. So that you realize that everyone that was converted to Jesus was a disciple. Okay? Even 
the, the um, dictionary English recognizes the fact that if at any point in time an individual have a relationship to the ministry of Jesus or confesses to the ministry of Jesus, it is ascribed to the person as a disciple. Okay? So everyone that's converted to Jesus or that we are brought to the ministry of Jesus or by the life of Jesus or by his preaching or by his disciples, we are all disciples. Okay? Now, everyone that was converted to Jesus was all... Uh, are now also called Christians. So in other words, you cannot separate a life of a Christian or separate the word, of, um, the word Christian from the life or the principle of discipleship. So when you say I'm a Christian, it simply means I'm a disciple of Jesus. Simple, okay? I'm a Christian. When you proclaim I'm a Christian, it simply means I'm a disciple of Jesus. And yes, we've had in our, um, our forms that we feel every day, what is your religion, Christianity, and we take it lightly. It has become a general umbrella of you're not a Muslim, you're not a theist, you're not a traditionalist, therefore you're a Christian. That is, that is where everybody hides. Even that, when you go deep, you realize that there are a lot of differences, there are a lot of lacuna in what we call discipleship and what we call Christianity. Okay? So, discipleship should not be just a program, just as I say, that you sign up, but rather it should be the culture of the church. Okay? It should be I now ask a question. If we don't do discipleship, what do we do? Okay? If we don't teach for others to teach so that the kingdom of God will increase, then what are we doing? So you realize that we may still be in the church, we may still be doing church, but what we are called to do is missing. Because it's in the process of discipleship that you learn to live the life of Christ. You learn to model your life as Christ modeled his life. And also you learn to teach others to do the same. And to also teach them to teach others. Praise the Lord. Now, you, you realize that when we talk about discipleship, we may look at um, discipleship at just a church program, or you realize that discipleship goes down to the foundational units from the family. Okay? So, as parents, you have the responsibility. As siblings, you are born again and your siblings are not. You have the responsibility at home. Okay? As Flatmates, as roommates, you have the responsibility at school. So it begins from smaller units before we even start talking about the discipleship program at the church level and the discipleship program that should be a culture of every living Christian. Okay, so you realize that is, discipleship is... It's just what we, sh we should be doing. You know, I was in a training by um, Professor Nokawa was doing um, two weeks, uh, three weeks ago. Quite an interesting one. And we realized that we just found out that, or we, at least by our research, that the English dictionary ascribed the word discipleship to Christians or those that believe in Jesus or follow Jesus. But interestingly, the world has even taken it to a greater level in carrying out the process of discipleship, okay? So you realize that in that definition, at a the point they say some that believe in some philosophy, okay? So if there are specific philosophy that you believe in, you may be a disciple to that. And you realize that there are a lot of templates that have been created by different groups and different um, 
society to ensure that there is a continuous um, propagation of their agenda and of the agenda of their people. So they are following the pattern which Christ has created. Then we Christians are lagging behind in doing what the originator who we follow asks us to do. And the world is already going ahead to produce it. Okay? Now we look at Jesus' model. We'll look at this briefly, then we'll talk about it later. Jesus' model. Okay? Now we we started with we start with looking at Jesus' model of discipleship. Then we'll look at um, the earlier church model of discipleship. Then we'll compare it to what we have in today's um, system of discipleship. Okay? So, the first part is that Jesus, interestingly, he didn't bother going for millions of people. Okay? He staked his whole ministry on 12 persons. On 12 persons. It simply says that when you're doing disciple, it's totally different from doing the public preaching. Evangelism is good, which we should always do. And let me emphasize here, evangelism is just a chip of the process of discipleship. Okay? Because you remember that part of what the disciples did during the process they were with Christ was to evangelize. So it's part of the discipleship. But when you focus only on discipleship, on evangelism, and leave the whole content of what God wants us to achieve, then, or what, what the process of discipleship is, then we will miss the point. We do evangelism. is a must. Okay, but when we follow the pattern Jesus has created, you realize that he had to select a few Okay, he had to select just 12 and poured out all, all he had on them. Okay, they had no option. It was not optional for them to fail. They just had to produce. They just had to be fruitful. There was no room for failure. He did that. That was when, at the Acts of the Apostle, when they saw them, they said, yes, these people have stayed with Christ. Therefore, they call them Christians. Okay? So that means he literally transformed or moved himself or imparted himself on them. Literally. Okay? So Jesus focused on just few men. He never bothered for the multitude. He never decided to gather them, the massive crusade, okay? Down the line, we look at how things will look or things we we'll consider when we are picking in this model of Jesus, okay? Not everybody, every Christian is expected to be a disciple and a disciple, I say that. But remember, when you're choosing your disciple, as a discipler, not everybody. You can't disciple everybody at, at the same time. Okay? So, discipleship was the foundation of Jesus' ministry. Yes, he did miracle. Yes, he, um, he healed the sick. He provided grains. He increased the bread, turned the water into wine. Yes, he did those things. Yes, they are part of Part of the ministry, showing what he can do or what um, the power of God can do. But down within, he knew he had a short time. He knew he had a bigger work to do of sacrificing his life on, on the cross of Calvary. He knew that. But that, that period it was, he made sure that there were a few persons that he was able to clone himself on, and they are able to do more. Praise the Lord. Okay? So, Jesus focused on a few and was able to translate that, transfer what he had on them. 
Now we'll look at the LA Tort model, okay? For the LA Tort model, you know, 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, that was where G, um, Paul was talking to Timothy. He told Timothy, he told Timothy, ensure that these things I have taught you, that you translate it to faithful men that are able to do the same. Okay? So 2 Timothy to say, at Timothy, it was, it was Paul sending Timothy to do as he has learned from him what he learned from Jesus' ministry. Okay? Paul learned by revelation. He learned by what he had. He learned by the experience he had. Okay? And he had to, he, he, he groomed Timothy. Now, the model, the modern, the earlier church, model the earlier church used was translate. So you realize that they were also following the pattern of Jesus. Okay? So they transferred upon, Paul did the same thing that Jesus did. He transferred himself or he cloned himself in Timothy. And at 2 Timothy 2, he now asked him to do the same to faithful men that are able to do, to do the same. That is the only way the kingdom of God will increase. That is the only way, not just increase, but the foundation of Jesus' ministry can be sustained. Discipleship. Sorry, not by evangelism. Okay, not just, okay, let me, not, let me not say, not by evangelism, not just by evangelism, not just by our life, but is an intentional act to ensure that one is able to do the same, do the same intentional act, that the cycle continues. So Timothy, to send out faithful men who are able to teach, and send others to also teach. So the process continues and is on us today as Christians, as the disciples of Christ, to do the same. So you realize Jesus did it, Paul did it, Timothy did it, and that is the only way he's able to get to us. Okay? And we're able to learn the foundation, we're able to learn the model. Christ has the life of Christ and what he has done in his life. So is is the call for the entire body of Christ to do the same. The expectation has not changed. The expectation is not planning to change. In fact, where we read before said, till the end of day. <laughs> so it's not ending. So discipleship Theori theoretically, it's important that we know what it means. Practically, it is even more important that we also do. So it's not just about hearing, which is the theory we are learning, but it's about also doing. Okay? Now, I'll read a passage in Colossians 1, 28 to 29. Paul writes, Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone matured in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy, not my energy, that he powerfully walk within me. Now you realize this actually talking about the means, okay? There are things I need us to take out from this passage. There is the center focus in this passage, that is proclaiming Christ. Him will proclaim. That is the center focus. 
everything about discipleship is focused on Christ. Remember at the beginning I said, not focused on me, the disciple, not focused on you, the disciple, but to point people to Christ, to learn from him. The life of Christ I've learned, this is how his life is. So you leave it out, and also they learn. Then the means, we talk about the teaching and the warning. You know, I'll still talk about the warning, okay? There are two parts. There is the gospel, which you tell the good news of what Christ has done. Which, um, okay, let me not jump. I'll still get to that. So there is a teaching and there is a warning of everyone. Warning is to avert people getting to internal dimension. Okay? Teaching is about making people live the life that Christ lived. Okay? And the whole essence of the teaching is that at the end of the day, that everyone, I don't know whether your Bible said otherwise, but my Bible said everyone, every. Okay, and it's the will of God that everyone will come to maturity in Christ. Okay, so that we present everyone matured in Christ. And of course, for you to get this, there must be a cost, which is you struggle, there will be challenges, there will be struggle, there will be challenges. But remember, we don't do by our strength. We do by the strength of him that is in us. Okay? So if you're thinking that is by what you have attained or by how you have lived or by how you have been able to, to live your life, no. Every one of us have a weakness at a point in life. Okay? So if it's by your making, your weakness may be the hindrance, but it's not by your making. So therefore, you do your part by his strength that is working within me, within you. Okay, so remember, we proclaim Jesus. We teach and warn so that everyone will be matured in Christ. And that we must do irrespective of whatever situation we have or we see ourselves by the strength of God that is at work within us. Okay? Now, a lot of people have talked, there are a lot of books that have been written on strategies for, for discipleship, the, the process, the outline. The truth is, there's no single strategy. Okay, there's no, when you talk about strategy, there is a principle of discipleship. There's no doubt about that. But when you talk about the means, how, how do you do it? There's no singular defined means. There are seen people that got born again by just seeing another person living their life. Okay, I've seen people that got born again by just seeing another person telling their story. Okay, there are people that also go born again by somebody preaching. There are people that go born again by a series of preaching, a series of mentorship, a series of. There are people that go born again by their first contact. So if you say there is a one way strategy, no, there is no. Okay, so we realize that there is no single strategy anybody can at any point, either by your preaching or by your living. Either by saying it or by the life you live, anybody can get born again. Anybody can come to become a follower of Jesus, to become a disciple. Now, of course, there are a lot of them that are listed in the Bible where they describe in, in titles, older, older women, trained younger women. Remember, it is the things they do in their family, building their family, building the church of God, okay? We talked about Paul trained Timothy 
to train others to train others. Okay, so that is a training process. That is a mentorship process. Okay, then you also I describe the one of foundational issues of foundation of the units, the basic unit, which is at the family, the mother, the father training their children, discipling their children. In fact, interestingly, um, one of my colleagues I met, one of my colleagues I met said, is his father that made that, that led him to Christ. It is the process in the morning devotion that they did that. Okay, that is an interesting one. Okay, then there is also the missionaries going to the hinterland. There are people that will do that, bringing disciples to Christ. I, 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 I have a friend, very close friend. In fact, interestingly, he's getting married. Is walking somewhere in a do state when I, I went for service. That's when I met her. And she's still there. In fact, she was there before I came. She's still there to, to date. And by God's grace, is getting married. But she has labored in the midst of... In fact, I, the day I went to where she stayed, we got to a point, the, car st um, the bike stopped. We used our leg to go up the rest. It is, it is that, that hinterland. Okay, and there, every time they have a news, they have a good news of somebody getting born again um, because it's a Muslim community. So you have people getting converted. It is usually an interesting news on our WhatsApp group that somebody got born again. Okay, because that's a Muslim community. But she labors in that place. Okay, sometimes we do organize mission outreach, we send funds so that mission outreach can go. Sometimes you will be just to supply food that they will eat. You realize that the process is just, be, the strategy is beyond just a single way. There are people that go born again by just providing food for their children. Some got born again, children that got born again, we had this school that she was making, that she made, or she provided. She teaches, she employs people based on support from outside, she pays a few teachers that makes that school free. And they're able to impact on these children of Muslim families. So you realize that discipleship can come, the strategy can come in different ways. Okay? Now you also talk about the discipleship within the four walls of our conventional church. Okay? Within Christians. Okay? Remember I said, no single individual has outgrown the life of being a disciple. None. So there is no graduation. There is no point where you get, you say, I have a certificate, therefore I'm now a disciple master or disciple maker. No, we are all disciples and we will continue to be disciples. Okay? And that we can do by sharing with ourselves, encouraging ourselves, exalting ourselves, reminding ourselves of things that we have learned. Okay, so that is a continuous process that we do for ourselves. Okay, just like I said, I, there was one of the crusades by T.D. Jakes. I remember he, he, he didn't preach, but somebody sang a song, after the song, I can't remember that, I can't forget that experience I, I, I remember. One young man with a um, tattoo, had, had a lot of chain on the neck, the trouser was below waist. He came to the altar just by singing, somebody sang. And in fact, if, if I, I think I gave, again, I gave my life to Christ again that day. Because after the singing, even me that was watching was by the lyrics, by the atmosphere that was created, lives were transformed. People came to the knowledge of Christ just by singing. So you realize that gifts also can serve. So people get, bring disciples by their gifts. So you realize that the strategies can be beyond. Priscilla and Aquila, when they met Apollos, he was at the spot. The first contact, they hit it. 
Some you have to take a process, some you have to take a while to achieve. Okay, so you realize that the strategy is beyond. Now, we now ask the question what is discipleship? Now, there is an interesting part to it. Okay, so we've described where there is a teacher and there is a student, where there is a discipler and there is a disciple. Okay, but it, something we are forgetting is the part of the relationship. Relationship. So discipleship is a relationship, not not uh, not um, not a, not just a process, not just um, something you do. It's a process, not just what we do, not just what we feel like doing, but it has to be a conscious relationship between a teacher and a disciple uh, and a student, a disciple and a disciple. Okay, so. Yes, many churches have different elements of it. They have um, different, different parts, okay? But a lot of churches lack the holistic nature or model as created by Christ, okay? So we'll look through it. So I needed to emphasize something. Discipleship is not just fulfilled um, by evangelism, um, it's not just uh, by fellowship. Making converts, yes, is good. You preach, somebody um, agrees and give, gives um, his or her life to Christ. Yes, okay, it's not just, just that. Um, seminar topics, yes, yeah, seminars are good. Um, listening to sermons, preachings, hanging out with, with elderly ones, okay, which is expected that older Christians will give, will be able to give um, the guidance needed. And we, are, we can easily assume that being around them will be the same as discipleship. Not quite. What is part of it? So you realize that to have a complete discipleship, every of these has to be put in place. It's a holistic thing. So there is a part of fellowship. There is a part of the evangelism. There is a part part of the Bible study, there's a part of the seminars and trainings of things, there's a part of our life, accountability, you are able, people look at you, they say, yes, this one is a, is a Christian, this one is a disciple, this one is, is able to model the life of Christ and we are able to see Christ in him, okay? So all this all help towards discipleship, but none as, a, as an entity on its own is able to cover what is needed for a disciple. Okay? So, daily we walk is an entity and things we need to continuously do. Okay? The essentials of a disciple. Now, I really need us, why this training or this um, prayer section, we are hoping that at the end of it, that every one of us here will realize how important um, discipleship is and become, decide intentionally to become a discipler, okay? Yes, don't forget, don't forget the fact that you are a disciple yourself but intentionally become a disciple because that's where the system breaks. We all have come to the knowledge of Christ. We all have become um, disciples of Christ. Okay, but a few are disciples. Okay, so we go through essentials of a disciple and trust God that you help us to align ourselves to certain things that will help us to become the desired disciples in the kingdom of God. Okay, so by looking at the Jesus ministry as we described the model and also the LA church, we see that the holistic disciple involves someone training, training the disciples in what? In relationship and in ministry. Okay, so I would have loved to emphasize, underline word 
also underlying relationship and also underlying ministry. So we look at these three aspects, three essentials of a discipler, and we'll see how far we've gone or where we'll need to improve, okay? Now, when we talk about the word, the word, we're talking about the gospel of Jesus, okay? When we talk about the relationship, we're talking about the evident love for others, okay? Not just um, because you have to do it or because they say we have to do it. It has to come out of a body, out of an understanding, out of sincere love that you don't want those people to lose the things you're benefiting or to get to internal damnation. okay? Then, of course, the ministry, which is the motive, okay, the things you do, the whole essence is to please God. And that has to happen at the level of the heart. Okay, so you have the word, what we, what we proclaim, you have the means, the relationship that needs to be created, and you have the end result, which is the ministry, what is at the end, okay? So if you are clear on the gospel, evident in your love for others, and doing everything to please God, who examine your heart, God will use you to help others grow to be more like Christ. Okay, so if you are clear in the gospel and there is an evidence of your love for others and you're doing it to please God, that examines the heart. So it must come at the level of the heart. Then definitely God will help you to make others to grow. Okay, so, so there is a part there is a three part to it. The first part we'll deal with is the word, okay? So when we talk about the word, we are talking about God's words, as I said, is the gospel of Christ that we are discussing when we talk about the word. Okay, teaching disciples to obey all that Christ commanded and model throughout the scripture. When we talk about the gospel, there's nothing else about the gospel apart from the life of Christ. <laughs> um, it's simply the life of Christ, nothing else. It's Christ and Christ, how he lived, what he did, his, the purpose of what he did, the intention of what he did, and what he achieved at the end of the day. Okay, so it's about the life of Christ. That is the gospel of God. That is the gospel of Jesus, the gospel of Christ, not that of man. Now, interestingly, I have listened to a lot of preachers and a lot of evangelists with a lot of twisted message, all still from the Bible. Interestingly, all still from, I, not that I'm surprised because even Satan, the father of all liars, Protect the Bible, okay? So, but it's good that we know what is the foundational truth. What is the, 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 what the gospel is. Gospel is about what Jesus did to make us better, okay? His life here on earth, are we able, modeling what we should live or what should be our life, what our life should be. Okay, so the gospel when you talk about the gospel, okay, I mentioned there are different, um, different gospels. In fact, um, I've, I've, I've discussed, sorry if, if there's somebody, uh, there's somebody in Catholic here, okay? Okay, I know we have some, but I have a friend that is a Catholic, and he described, in fact, my boss in the office, even some few days ago, was talking about, uh, so far as you're doing the good, your, your doing your good work, your uh, giving food to the poor, supporting the church, and providing for the church. I mean, and you believe that uh, Jesus existed. I mean, you are you are good. So, for them, there is a faith. Yes, they believe in Christ, but they needed to add work to it. Okay. Then for the Jews, Judaism, they believe yes, 
there is a faith. We are hoping there is a Jesus, yes. Uh, we are still expecting the, the Messiah, Jesus, existed, okay? But that their Jewish law, so far as you follow it as it is, then yes, you are going to heaven. That's, that was the situation you have with the Sadducees and the Pharisees, okay? Yes, they have their differences in terms of resurrection, resurrection and differences in their belief. But a common ground for them is that Jewish law. Jewish law press, gives a direction of what you, your life should be. Yeah. So, so far as you're living according to that, oh, beautiful. Okay, but when we talk about the gospel, the gospel does not talk about necessarily about what you did or what you didn't do. It doesn't talk about um, your ability or the sacrifice you made or the more you pay. Okay. The gospel simply says that we are not able, <laughs> that we, we cannot by our strength do it, but that by the fact that we believe in Christ, okay, and the work that he has done on the cross, we are saved. Not by work, not by law, not by our action, but by our faith, okay? Now, Ephesians 2, 8 to 10, as we can see on the screen, say, for by grace we have been saved through faith. <laughs> and that, that not of yourself, it is simply a gift of God, not as a result of work, so that no man can boast. Okay? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. In other words, it is by our faith, okay, that we are now, it is our faith that brings the good work, not necessarily our faith and the good work. I don't know whether I confused you there, okay? He said, Save true faith, not is simply a gift, not a result of our work, so that no man can boast. Rather, is God working in us by our faith to bring the good work? Praise the Lord. Okay, so Paul went further to say something, but to to the to the one who does the work. Who does not work? <laughs> you know, that is interesting. That if you don't work, but you believe, to you, it is righteousness. Interesting. Okay? And, you know, it makes, it makes the gospel easy. It makes the gospel simple. That is not by the strength of what you do. It is simply by gift of God. Okay? So, by believing in him, who justifies the ungodly? Okay, by believing in what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary that has paid the sin, even before we are given back to, even before we came to be, he paid the sin. So by that, simply believing, we have it. Okay? It's adjust to us as righteousness. Okay, so remember in Luke chapter 8, from verse 9 to 14, when there was a tax collector, okay, and there was also um, the Pharisee. The Pharisee felt, okay, I live by the Jewish law, I'm, 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 I'm holy, I'm, I'm upright. He came before God and said, God, I know, forget. He forgot about what he, he was talking about, look at him, this sinner, I know him is a tax collector. God, what is he doing here? I know you cannot forgive him, so don't forgive him. You know I'm righteous. That was what the Pharisee was doing, okay? But the task collector went, went home satisfied, in fact, justified, by the time he lay, left the synagogue, by coming and saying, Lord, it's not by me. I know I'm a failure. <laughs> that is just what I said. I, he's just trying to buttress what Paul said. You say, I know I'm a failure, but 
I have come before you. And that was how he, he went home, sorted and justified. Okay? So, the gospel have a struggle. So we acknowledge that we are seen, we are, we are seen as without a claim for heaven. And the gospel reveals that my heart is desperately wicked as, as that of any worse sinner. So, you know, for, for a Pharisee, I'm using Pharisee, we still have Pharisee in our midst, though they are not called Pharisee. There are a lot of Christians that feel they are above all. I feels okay, I'm a bishop, therefore, I'm above sin. In fact, uh, I remember um, I have a colleague some, sometime when, when I traveled to Akure. He, he was an elder in their church, okay? And he's part of those that give, give the sanction when there is a sin. So on one of those occasions, he was talking about a lady uh, and how they sanctioned them, why, why they had to sanction. I just, I just asked her, okay? Yes, yes, she has committed it, but... <laughs> The way you, you are sounding does not say that there was a correction in love. It was as if you're happy doing it, okay? So there are people that I, I can do it. There are people that way, okay? They feel everybody should be at that. So for those people, what they do, those their actions or their claimed life, when you bring the actual gospel to them, it actually pokes at their, it actually pokes at their, at their ego, Okay? So for them, they are threatened by the fact that the gospel simply said, acknowledge the fact that you're a sinner. That's on one side. On the other side, you have those that don't want to hear that there is a hell or there is an internal dimension. There are people that don't want to hear that, okay? So you have those class of people too, all struggling for the same against the gospel. So you realize the gospel is simple, but there are two extremes to gospel, all trying to took the simple gospel, that Christ came on earth, lived his life. If anyone can believe, if anyone can believe, then they are justified. It's as simple as that. Okay, so when you have disciples or people training or people trying to teach others other things you must, not like, you realize when you live a life, a simple life like Christ, and you must bear your life the way Christ, when I'm living above board, when they brought the, the halot, they caught in the act of sex, um, of um, the, the, the act, when they brought, brought him, and Jesus, they asked Jesus, they wanted to tempt t- him and ask him, what shall we do, okay? Remember what he did. He let her release her, okay? So that, he didn't judge her. I remember, he never judged her. He said, go and sin no more, okay? So he said, go and sin no more. Oh, I'll be fast so that I don't take you too much into night, okay? So we go into, we talked about the world. So the world is essential in our relationship, okay? And it's a very key, important part. Then relationship, okay? Oh, there's a passage as I told that past. Let's go back. Um, okay, beautiful. Okay, so now, um, just like the first passage, the first Thessalonians 2, 7 to 8, he said, but we, but we proven by gentle among you, okay? Now, and he's talking about this Paul talking, how they were able, okay, the relationship, the godly manner, okay? So, as a nurse, mother, mother, a nursing mother tender, tenderly cared for her own children, having so fond an affection for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also on your own life, <laughs> because you have become very dear to us, okay? So you realize that um, every, every nursing mother has a difficulty. A child cries mostly at night, uh, as, as, a, as a nursing father recently knows at least the last one is up to one, um, a, year, a year plus, going to two years. I know the experience. Sometimes they're not carrying again, okay? So sometimes you become part of, part of the nursing father, and you do the nursing father. And of course, they cry. All they know is about themselves, what they need. When they are comfortable, they cry. They need their food. You have to be there. In fact, even my two years son. Once I am stepping out of house, he's crying. I'm coming in. If I decide to walk, it's a problem. He will come and close the laptop house to do this. I have to stay back in the office because if I get home, forget it. We are not able to do this. Okay? So you realize that children, the babies have their issues. When they are hungry, when they are feeling bad, they are dirty, they poo on themselves. If you don't put diapers, they poo on the bed or poo on the floor. It doesn't concern them. Okay? So irrespective of what they do, <laughs> you just have to be there for them. You just have to take care of them. You just have to take care of them. You just have to care for them. It's the same way um, 
And you realize at the end of the day, most times the children are more closer, at least at the younger age, to their mothers. The mother breastfeeds, the mother takes care of them. In most families, as, okay, my first son, yes, called, followed that pattern, though my second son decided to call Papa first, that did first before he called mommy. But in most families, it's simply because mommy has been there. So just like you mentioned, um, Jesus, uh, during his own discipleship, just like we are describing the model of Jesus, she realized that he lived with them, he stayed with them, he slept with them. So they literally, they literally saw everything about Jesus, okay? And uh, in fact, somebody was describing it. He said, during them, just like in a, in a dormitory, when males go together to bath. So they know Jesus, they know him naked, they know him with clothes, they know him sleeping, they know him yawning, they know him laughing, okay? So they literally know everything about, they saw the difference, they saw that life, okay? So there was no need of commanding them to do, but they just had to leave because they've seen it. So it's not based on what Jesus told them. So they know everything about Jesus. So intimacy is important, is an important part of um, discipleship, a relationship. So if you're able to relationship with God itself is possible. And when you say that, you're not saying it out of, they are not getting it out of a command, but they are getting it out of what they have seen because they have related with you and also you're able to relate. So relationship have a two-way part. Telling the person to have a direct relationship with God and the person also is able to relate with you. Okay, so where you are not, where you stay in a hostel and people are not able to relate with you or people are not able to, there is no day you go without shout, without a, or Jesus that you're talking about. So, but when they realize that, oh, this person, anytime you see him, there's no issue. Then they realize, oh, if he's talking about God, that means there is a better, that means is a possibility to live that way. So it's easy to preach when there is, it's easy to disciple when there is a relationship, okay? So when you do the testimony, your down part, your up part, your middle part, they realize, oh, this is a human being is able to do it, okay? So then the last part of this um, essential is the ministry, which is the motive, okay? So training disciples in service and evangelism, somebody said evangelism spreads the gospel service is the work you done, you, you, you did or done to motivate others to honor Jesus, okay? Interestingly, you know, is that it can be as simple as buying a, co a coffee or, or buying a tea or buying, buying a drink for somebody, a soft drink for somebody, okay? It can be as with water, okay? Now, I had an experience, um, one of my neighbors in this period. Also, in fact, I was, I struggled and struggled. Of course, it wasn't, a, the burden was too much for me, it was too much that I must do something for them because I see the family. I just packaged a few things, called the man and gave, my wife gave the woman. The next discussion we are having is, um, you're going for Thursday fellowship, so can we join you for the fellowship? I didn't do it because I felt I, I have enough, but the real truth is that I was restless because the Holy Spirit mandated me that I must do it. Okay, so yes, I saw the need, but the, I was uncomfortable because I realized, yes, if I do this, and by the next this week fellowship, okay, so you realize that there is evangelism, there is a preaching by your life, that the way you model your life, and also there is by service, the one you do, and people wonder, ah, do people still do this in this era? Okay, imagine, imagine, Okay, the story of somebody that returned, yes, returned money. Yes, it may be as simple as, yes, I'm a born again, and I want to use this opportunity and say, Christ has blessed me, and I therefore I can't do it. Mark me, people will respond to that gospel more than most preachers will speak, okay? So you realize that there are services you do that are honor to God, and by default, people come, people um, grow their life and become anything which he has never done, okay? So he demonstrates it first, he leaves it out. The same way is, the same model is teaching us that we should leave it out, demonstrate it, so that when we speak, people say, yes, he's able. But somebody said, um, I was reading a book, he said, ah, he knocked, he said, okay, after talking, he said, okay, if he, he actually said that, he sent, he had money, he sent He sent a private investigator to go and investigate five pastors in, in uh in, in his community, and that if he finds anyone that lives that life, then he will stay back. <laughs> it's funny, people making such a decision. But in reality, people that he investigated, he was able to find somebody that actually lived the life. And by default, he had to go to that, um, that, that congregation because of that, that priest, okay? So you realize that when you live your life, there are people watching and you do it with the intention to honor God, you realize you live above God most times, okay? And your life becomes that teaching ministry that becomes a teaching tool 
apart from your services. Okay, so you realize that everything we do is honor to God. So now, God, I want us to remember some things. When we seek, we seek for his glory, not for our own glory. We don't preach. We don't, we don't um, go into discipleship because we want to claim the most disciple or want to talk about ourselves. But remember, we are talking about Christ. We are talking about the gospel. Is the gospel always. Okay, so it's always about God. Okay, so remember that. Now, um, it's not always rosy. There is always the part of, um, there is trials. Okay, you can actually call somebody, you can actually bring somebody for, for discipleship, or you invite somebody for, for a program and the person turns you down. Timothy, Timothy made progress. Demas, we remember, abandoned Paul. Remember the service role welfare, warfare, okay, that comes from different angles. So we must always do remembering to please God in all. We teach the sound doctrine. Most people major on math teaching doctrinal issues. So when we teach, our, teach the sound one to grow through our moral integrity, okay? We're effective disciples with blemish. Nobody go against um, the word of God, okay? Financially, that is the easiest. Okay, and avoid deceptions and manipulation. If it's to develop health, there must be an increase, okay? If you want to decide, what do you look Confident that whoever that you are entrusted, you have multi faithful men that are able to do that, you must be available in and you must be willing to learn. Okay, and they are of the church. We are to a people that so that others will be a people that so it's a process that will continue and it's for the whole church. Okay, so every believer should be helping unbelievers and uh, showing them to Christ. Okay, that is making a disciple. Then every Christian should be helping other believers to maturity. That is making a disciple. Then every Christian should be seeking to get help from themselves or from others to keep growing. That is also disciple. So you realize part is getting a believer. Then those that believe help them to grow to maturity. Even at maturity, get others to remain at the same or grow more and more. That is all discipleship. Okay? Convert, yes. A new convert, yes. The little surprise, he understands that there is a relationship that has to be created. He understands the basic, which is the word, and he understands it's for the purpose of pleasing God and honoring God. Yes, please do it. But remember, it's not by your strength. As we mentioned, it's by the power of God, his energy at work within us. Okay, so it's not by our strength. We can do it through our weakness. And every church, including CMDA, should think of how to make it a lifestyle for everybody, okay? Just like in CMDA, we have different enriched reaching within ourselves. Academic tutorial must be geared towards having honoring God and having an impact. Any academic tutorial that ended up being only academic, uh, it has a comma. At least there should be a short, a minute or two, dropping the word of God whatever comes to our, our program. We'll be able to listen to our, our, our terms, okay? And most importantly, our lives. Our lives should speak wherever we are, is it in the, in the class, in our houses, even this period you are home? People should be able to say, yes, this one is different. Praise the Lord. Ah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for the opportunity. I think it's time to, if you have some questions, so that we can briefly take it. Okay? Um, thank you very much. Yes, I think we have. Thank you very much. I want to know if there is a way to go around discipleship when distance is a challenge. Okay? There is a scenario, okay, together. And this is the scenario in my case. Together with the help of a team, have a visual platform targeted and helping teenagers grow. Okay, we follow them up as much as possible. There are times close contact with. An example is a girl in Abuja. Why I'm in Ibadan? Okay, but it is not something feasible. Are there ways to ensure that that distance is not limiting in any way while helping others grow? Okay, um, just to tackle that. Okay, uh, of course we have the. With, with the experience, you know, before now, there are things we think that are impossible to do, okay? Now, is remember, as you're talking with the visual, as much as you can, you are already doing a discipleship, a discipleship work. But there is a part where, you know, just like I'm, I'm discussing with you over, over uh, visual, I say everything I say, okay? But there are parts you don't see about me. There are things you don't know about me. So you feel, okay, this is a teaching. You should learn from teaching, teaching by only talking. There are things you also learn by seeing, okay? So the distance, yes, is a challenge, okay? What you're doing, visual, is helpful, and you're not missing it. It's part of it. 
But the period that you are able to have a close contact with them is also important. So we don't say that distance. Remember, when you're talking about discipleship, you may not just be only you imparting at the same time. There may be other people also doing. So you may be doing the talking part. When they look at someone else around them, it becomes clearer. Yes, this is what you are together. But just to be plain, um, discipleship, as much as even in the challenge we have, the much you can do over visual, good and fine. The much you can do over phone, good and fine. Encourage them to be in the midst, okay? Where you are not able, they are not, they are not able to see. Encourage them to be places they can see and they can be like a theory. They see it and it's easier, okay? What are the ones that a new convert, most importantly, most importantly, is get the person. Of course, um, when you get get the person, you become the person's congregation, okay? Now, remember, we, we talked about Jesus' model, okay? And we described how he showed them his life. <laughs> he, did, he didn't, permit me, remember one of those days he was um, teaching teaching them, um, teaching the crowd, okay? Because most times he doesn't sit them to teach them, teach them theory. He lives out the life, they see it and they learn, okay? So for a new convert, yes, Get the person to evaluate uh, if it's your church, good and fine. If get him to a congregation where he fits in, encourage this person to study the word of God. Because the word of God, in fact, first of all, most times I say start with the gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let him start from there. By the time he finishes reading the story and he progresses to the apostle and you have discussion with this person, then you came to understand it. It's not just about, yes, the congregation, the environment, the people interact is important. Okay. So, but a key part is let the person understand the foundation which is the gospel of jesus okay which you can get from the bible then you help discuss with this person okay so really really i want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to even um learn a lot of things an opportunity to discuss with you and it is about an intentional act of spreading the word of god through a relationship okay the gospel of god through a relationship with the motive with the motive of pleasing god so if you remember those three factors in everything then we are sorted out thank you for listening i trust that you've been blessed for more information you can visit our website www.cmdanigeria.org